how the heck am I gonna like shower? Like my first shower. And it was the hardest thing I had ever done. Um, and I just, in, in that moment, I was like, I'm never gonna be able to walk again. Like I'm, I'm never going to get back on like the fitness stage. Like I can't even put my, I can't even put my big toe on the ground. There's so much pain in my leg. Um, so it was, I think with the pain, but overall, like my mental, like where I was mentally, it was yeah. a very, very dark time. I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Missy, I had to get you on because truly, to me, this is one of the most inspirational stories heading into the 2024 Olympia. The story has everything. It checks all the checkboxes. Everyone saw your injury live, either on per in person or over the live stream. It happened in the spur of the moment. All eyes were on you. Um, so for you to sustain that kind of an injury... And we all know the rigors of prepping for a bodybuilding contest. And then obviously the additional level of prepping for the Olympia, you having to overcome a major injury and putting yourself back together, all the mental hurdles to overcome and then get back on that Olympia stage under a calendar year to me in and of itself is a major accomplishment and is to be celebrated. Um, let's start from the beginning. The injury moment it happened the first emotions running through your head gosh um so that moment it happened you know obviously being on stage at the olympia i have a lot of adrenaline running through me um but i so our our knee goes like this and essentially my acl snapped in that tumbling pass so what that means is it shifted forward so the whole tendon snapped and then i lost control of my knee but my mind and, you know, just being there, it was like, okay, no, we, we keep going. We do this routine. So you see me come out of the, the tumbling pass and I, I go into my continuing back handspring. And once I put my foot on the ground, I was like, oh, okay, something is not right. And I couldn't put any pressure on my foot, um, not knowing, like, did I just break my leg? Is it my knee? What just happened? Um, so it was really, really scary. I've never had an injury ever in my life, you know, competing as a, uh, you know, cheerleader, gymnast, never, never a serious injury, never a broken bone. Um, so it was really traumatic, you know. Um, I, I just remember looking at Bob on stage and just being like, please help me. Like, right. and I turned away from the audience because I obviously didn't want to like scare people and stuff. But I just remember looking at Bob being like, holy crap, I need help. Like someone get me off the stage because I couldn't, I couldn't walk. Um, so yeah, it was, there was a lot of emotions, you know, running through me. Um, arguably, I, <laughs> I, I dominated the physique round. Um, I knew my routine was going to blow everyone out of the water. So it was just, it was very unfortunate, but you know, it's bodybuilding stuff happens. So I'm just happy that I can, um, you know, get back on stage this year and just, you know, bring the best Missy possible. But after all that took place and you're backstage and there has to be, again, there's a human side, obviously there's the competitor side, there's the athlete side, but there is a human side and experiencing what you just experienced. Like there's one thing, if you suffered an injury, at the gym while training. There's another thing where, you know, it's spur of the moment you're walking your dogs and you, you, you pull a peck tear or what have you. This happened in front of a global audience. It, obviously there was all sorts of adrenaline pumping through you while you were backstage. Yeah. Did you have a, a moment to collect yourself in, in terms of the great, the grand moment, just kind of think to yourself, all right, like okay what's next what's next as a competitor are you thinking like okay literally what's the next step in all this or did you just kind of take a step back to reflect and just think all right 
what's best for Missy right now? <laughs> what do I need to do just to, from my own health at this moment? What was your your frame of mind when you had a few minutes to collect us and reflect upon what just happened? Yeah. So I remember getting carried off stage and getting put in like a chair uh, backstage and I was getting assessed by, you know, the EMTs back there. Um, you know, Dan Solomon made it a point to come over and, and see me and so did Tyler. So I, I did appreciate that. And, and Tarek Al Gundy as well. That's great. Um, but I just remember like sitting there and my husband got backstage and he was just like, 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 what do we do? You know, we're in Orlando, we're from Seattle, Washington. So the flight is like, uh, like a six hour flight coast to coast. Right. Um, and it was, it was just like, okay, we need to get to a hospital right away. We need to get like imaging done. We need to know how serious this is. Can you even fly home? All of this stuff. So yeah, I just remember being like, Oh, I, I I wanted to get back on stage so bad. I remember like sitting backstage crying to my husband being like, let, like ask him if they'll play my music again. I, I want to run the routine. And he's like, you can't walk. <laughs> so it was just, there was a lot of like delusion happening because it was just the shock of, you know, the injury and then just all of the work I had put in. I, I just wanted to really like show everyone last year just why I am the apex predator. <laughs> and right. unfortunately that didn't get to happen, but that's okay. You know, I worked really hard this year with, um, you know, having the surgery done um, and just all of the rehab. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I've put a lot of work in. So again, to clarify, and again, that's kind of why I asked you again, there's the, you separate yourself as a competitor and again, as a human being, there was a side of you where you legitimately thought, all right, play my music. I'm going to go back out there and try to give it another go. Oh yeah. Like I, I was like sitting backstage, like just please like, babe, just ask someone, put my music back on. Like I can do it. And I remember like, they were doing awards and, and Keon had got the 212. Right, right, right. And I was just like bawling hysterically, like that should have been me too. Like, <laughs> but you know, it's, uh, we are human, you know, we all work really hard and, um, I just, yeah, it just, the cards weren't in my favor last year and, um, I've made a lot of changes. So I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm just so ready to get to Las Vegas. So you get, I mean, look, obviously then you, you did go to the hospital, you get the necessary imaging done, you get the proper diagnosis. What was that process like just in terms of, again, you mentioned it, this show being in Orlando, you being from Seattle. Yeah. Um, what were the, I guess, challenges, the logistics for you to get back home? And again, in a manner where it was safe for you having sustained that injury. Yeah. So I, I did like post stories and stuff on my Instagram when I was flying home. Um, so I ended up going to like an Orlando emergency room and they basically, we can't, they basically said like, we can't do anything here. You have to like go to an orthopedic surgeon and, and get looked at um, because we think it's a, like an ACL tear. And at the time I actually thought it, my quad had torn as well because it was all like, it atrophied like right away. Like as yeah. soon as the injury happened, it started atrophying like that night. And I was like, whoa, okay. And then, you know, all the inflammation and everything as well. So I, I actually, the, the Orlando hospital was a little bit of a joke. <laughs> like <laughs> they, they did say like, oh, you can fly home, you know, take some Advil, whatever. But in hindsight, like they probably should have given me some type of like, painkiller because I was in so much pain for, for weeks, like just in agonizing pain. Um, if anyone has had an ACL tear, um, and meniscus, uh, tears, it is not fun. Um, so anyways, when, when I did get back home to Seattle, my husband and I, we found an orthopedic surgeon, he did all the imaging and he said, 
we have good news. Like your quad is not torn. Your quad is still intact, but you wow. have torn your ACL um, and you have two tears in your meniscus. So we need to like do surgery right away. So that was uh, after Olympia. So November 3rd. And then I had the surgery December 3rd because the injury was so, I guess, um, in like, because I had so much inflammation, they wanted to make sure that the swelling had gone down before they did the operation. Because if there's any swelling in the knee, um, you won't get that full range of motion back. So right. yep. it was, you know, we've had a lot of hurdles. Like I, I just don't even know to where to begin, but you know, with this whole surgery process and, and the rehabilitation, it's, there's, there's been a lot, there hasn't been any major setbacks, but it's, it was just a lot. <laughs> so, uh, you know, again, we talk about you as a competitor and you as a human, when you're talking to the orthopedic surgeon and they're diagnosing you and they're telling you what the course of treatment is going to be, uh, you know, is, uh, what did that discussion go like, as far as you talking to them, as far as, all right, listen, I need to get back on the Olympia stage uh, in October. So what, and, and, and to that, what are they saying? Are they saying to you, listen, uh, we can get you back on that stage or listen, this is probably best for you to take it slow and maybe, you know, look to the Arnold classic or whatever. What was that conversation like as far as, you know, again, you got the diagnosis, you have the, the course for treatment prescribed, you know, what everything's going to go on. Yeah. Um, that collaboration between you and the medical team, as far as what's the plan, what's the future? Yeah. So, um, the surgery was only supposed to be like three hours. Um, he was going to repair the, the ACL with my patellar tendon, which is the most painful way you can go. But because, um, you know, as a, as a bodybuilder, as a fitness athlete, I have to have, uh, the symmetry, right? Like you, you could take from your hamstring or your quad tendon, but it, it will look, different than your other legs. So I was like, no, let's do the patellar. If I can't have sensation on my knee or if I can't kneel on my knee the rest of the, my life, then that's okay, whatever. Like I just want my quads to be symmetrical. So we ended up doing the patellar tendon and um, I've never had that much pain in my entire life. Like the injury on stage, yes, it was like, it was, um, traumatic, painful, in some ways embarrassing. But then after the surgery process, like I was literally in excruciating pain for like two weeks on painkillers, like just wondering, like, am I ever going to be able to like be normal again? Mm. Um, so it was tough, but we ended up, um, also doing with the meniscus, um, your meniscus is like the cushion in between your knee. And in that tumbling pass, I horizontally tore both, both sides of the meniscus. Um, so, you know, typically, you know, with football players, they come back to sport like NFL guys, right. they just get an ACL tear and they're back within nine months playing, you know, whatever their position is. But because of my meniscus tear, um, I was non-weight bearing for 14 weeks on crutches, literally just in wow. like a bed with my like leg raised up for 14 weeks. It was the worst as someone who's coming off of, you know, an Olympia prep where we're in a calorie def deficit, double cardios, yeah. fitness practices, training, like to go to absolutely like sedentary sitting, watching TV, like <laughs> contemplating life. What do like, you do with yourself? Real. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I have to ask only because, you know, when we consider you, yes, you are a physique athlete, but again, with the fitness routines, that is a totally different dimension. Like you mentioned, NFL players, you know, there are athletes of all walks of different sports that have come back from ACL tears. 
but none of them care about what their leg looks like afterwards, right? They just want to make sure they can cut, they can jump, they can yeah. run. With you, it's a matter of exactly what you said, that you, your legs have to be symmetrical. There is a physique component to this. It's a physique round. Everything is judged. Every little microcosm of your you know, physique is judged. Um, I have to ask, before we get into, again, the first steps of being able to walk again, being able to you know get into some sort of athletic activity, was there ever a conversation? And I only ask this because you know when um, I posted that video of you on our Instagram yesterday, uh, we did have a few people comment like, oh, is she coming back to fitness or is she going to do figure? Was that ever a conversation? Was that even a thought that you could come back and not do fitness, do another division? I, I toy around with that sometimes. Um, but you know, fitness is like my heart. I've, I've been in the fitness division for the last 15 years. Um, I, I got my pro card in 2012 in Canada and, um, I've just, you know, I've evolved with the, with the sport of fitness. Um, right. I had some amazing mentors, Adela Garcia. She's a very, very good friend of mine. Love her to death. Um, and you know, we, we've seen the division evolve. Um, and I'd like to say that I I'm, one of the main reasons why that has happened, you know, the girls are coming now with like these crazy like handstand skills and tumbling and, you know, it wasn't happening back in the day and, it, it, and it's happening now. So I, right now, my division is fitness and um, I'm going to do everything I can to put on a good show next weekend at the Olympia. And uh, for, you know, the, the bodybuilding stage is always going to be there. Will I go into figure or women's physique? I don't know, but uh, it, it, it'll, once I, if I ever make that decision, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> Sweet. That'll be an exclusive. Uh, but, okay, so let's go back to the part where, you know, it's one thing to be in an Olympia prep. I, I can imagine that for as long as you've been competing, you have stories and chapters upon chapters as far as, you know, oh, well, this is a good prep. This is a smooth prep. This is a rough prep. Here we hit a bit of a rough point in terms of the diet, in terms of the training. This prep has to be unlike any other, not only for you, but really over the landscape of Olympia athletes. Because, again, we are talking about a division that involves routines. It involves, you know, let's just be very honest, very, you know, feats of athleticism mixed with violence up on that stage. It is not for everyone. When You know, in, in the beginning stages of your rehab, just being able to walk again, you had to have been going through chapters of pain. Was there any thought of you that just one night you'd wake up in pain, you're just like, what am I doing? Am I, am I doing the right thing? Or were you just mentally gung-ho focused that this was going to be the end game, that you were destined to be back up on that fitness Olympia stage no matter what? Yeah. So honestly, when, when I was going through like the actual like healing process of, of non weight bearing. So on crutches in a walker, um, I, I can remember vividly, um, <laughs> sitting on the toilet because I'm about to take a shower, but there, like life was so different. Like I, I feel so sorry for people who don't have like um, like the help that they need in situations like this. Like, I'm very thankful that my husband was super supportive with everything. Um, but I, I do remember like sitting on the toilet with like my leg up being like, how the heck am I going to like shower? Like my first shower. And it was the hardest thing I had ever done. Um, and I just, in, in that moment, I was like, I'm never going to be able to walk again. Like I'm, I'm never going to get back on like the fitness stage. Like I can't even put my, I can't even put my big toe on the ground. There's so much pain in my leg. Um, so it was, I think with the pain, but overall, like my mental, like where I was mentally, it was yeah. a very, very dark time. Um, I, I, I find when I get into you know, situations where I 
this something like this has never happened before but you know in times where i'm like deep into a prep i i tend to self isolate and i've been kind of isolating this entire year mm -hmm. um and and it's selfish but like i also had to really work hard on myself i just i didn't have any time for anything else like i with like going to rehab you know um at one time I was going four days a week. Uh, we had cut it back to three days. And then, you know, we have to start adding in training and cardios and starting fitness literally from square one. Um, like Sid, I couldn't even jump. Like I, there were days where I was like, what the heck am I doing? Like, I can't even get an inch off the ground here. So, and that was only like maybe two months ago. So wow. I'm... <laughs> I'm very blessed um, just to just to be able to be where I'm at right now, and I and I get that. So, so, so this was two months ago, I and mean, I I have to ask because again the you know, the the medical team that you're working with, what are the different stages in terms of clearance? Right, like okay, you are clear to get back on a treadmill, you are clear to start lifting again. If this was two months ago, what was that conversation like with your medical team to be able to tell you, yes, Missy, you are cleared to go back full bore into your fitness routines, jump this, that, tumble with absolutely no reservations? Yeah. So my my surgeon, um, his name is Dr. Moulton uh, here in Seattle. He is like young and very optimistic and just 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 so well educated i and super understanding so he's been very encouraging and um you know he he would assess me like once a month i would go and see him or if i needed to see him earlier but he was he was confident that i would be back um to the olympia in october um but it didn't come without like the hard work and you know everything that i put into it so you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I, I look back on it and I'm like, I don't even know how I did it. Like, cause it's, it's, you know, I think like the statistic is like 50% of like, uh, people with ACL injuries never return to sport or they come back and they're not like a hundred percent the same. So, you know, obviously like I'm going to, perform my routine and you guys are going to see what I've, what I've come up with and uh, more of like new skills and stuff. But um, as for like the tumbling, um, it was very hard mentally to start working on that again, um, jumping, doing backhand springs, all of that type of stuff. I've never had a mental block in my life, um, but I did experience that very similar to like Simone Biles with the twisties. Yeah. I would get, I would be standing in my garage cause I have um, like a gymnastic mat out there and I would be standing and I would start to like get vertigo because, you know, going backwards. Um, so it took a lot of like mental work as well, like my, doing for myself and just really like trusting my body again. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it was it's it's been tough for sure. Well, that, that's kind of where I was going to go next, because, again, there is the physical aspect. There is getting physically clear to do certain things. But then there is in your own mind. Right. Uh, you suffer an injury. And again, not to harp on it, but you suffer an injury of the magnitude where it happens so publicly, you know, mm -hmm. in the literal championship event of your sport in front of a global audience there had to be a traumatic aspect to what happened. And during the course of your recovery, during the course of your prep, there had to have been demons that you had to overcome in order to you know, fully trust yourself, trust your body, and your ability to be able to go out there and replicate what you've always done. What was that process like in terms of mentally overcoming those fears, those demons? Did you have to get any sort of... Uh, help did you seek guidance um or was it something that you know within yourself you had to kind of work to to overcome and it was a what was that process like yeah so it's it's been a lot of like inward 
work on myself. That's what we're also trying to find inward <laughs> introspection. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, you know, we, you can, you can look for like outside opinion and, um, you know, how did their recovery go? And everyone's recovery is going to be different and everyone's trauma is different as well. Um, there had, there's been a lot of like days where I just would sit and cry. Um, and I, I don't, I'm not the type of person to like put it out there on social media, like, you know, throwing at the pity card and I, that's not me. Like, but now that it's like in the past and I'm kind of over it, um, I, I can be comfortable about like expressing and, and talking about it. But yeah, it was just tough. Like I, 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 I really feel like when something like this happens, it not only affects you, but it affects like your partner as well. Um, so like my husband, he, he sees this injury happen on stage mm. and it's affected him in a, in a negative way as well. Like, um, because when I'm like now showing him like fitness skills, he's like, like, are you okay? Like, is everything right, good? Right, 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 right. Yeah, my babe. Like it's, it's all right. But, um, yeah, I just, I, as for like getting help from like people, um, my husband has been an amazing support system shoulder to lean on cry to he he offers such great advice um i did try to do like online therapy yeah just be and this was the time where i was you know posted up in bed for weeks and you know not really doing much um so i did a couple sessions but i just felt like this is not for me like no one knows what i need better than myself so I need to almost just like, and this might sound like harsh and I'm not trying, and I know everyone is different. This is just what worked for me. Yeah. But I was like, okay, put your big girl pants on. Like it's time to get to work. Like if you want to get back on the Olympia stage in 2024, you need to start like now, like get your mind right. Like start focusing on the important things, like the little wins every day. So if that's, having a shower without crying, um, or, uh, sorry, it's, it's talking about it, like brings up, um, the emotion, uh, it brings it back. So I, I, of sorry, course. sorry. If no, I no, no. Look, and again, this is, I think this is why I wanted to make sure that we got you on, because again, this is a, this is the kind of story that I think any, forget about Olympian, any athlete of any sport, you know, is going to hear, is going to listen to, and is going to draw inspiration from. Because again, what you endured, it this is this again equivalent of, you know, an NFL player getting injured during the Super Bowl with the eyes of the world on them, right? And how do they come back from that? What are the steps that they have to take mentally? You know, what are the demons that they have to overcome? What are some of the fears that they have to overcome? You know, so now, you know, you you've gotten to a certain point, right? And obviously, we are a week away from the Olympia, I have to ask, what was the biggest motivation? Like what lit that fire, right? There is enough for you to say, all right, listen, you know, uh, when it first happened, I need to get back at that. I, I play my music. I need to get back on the stage. Okay. But then you go through the period of recovery of being able to walk, you know, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step, but there had to have been something that just lit a fire under you, because if you don't have that fire, there's no way you're able to do what you're about to do in a week. What right. was that? What was it? Something where you said to yourself, there's unfinished business. Mm. Was it that you look at, you know, again, you, you hear Keon Pearson's name getting called and you saying to yourself, you know, I, I, I got it. I have to hear Bob Ciccarello announce that for me this year. What was that thing that just, once it hit your head, you're like, F this, F everything. I'm getting back to work and I'm going to see this thing through. I think it was the the moment where, you know, I turned my back to the audience and I looked at Bob and I, like, I, I watched this video often and I'm like, help me. Mm. And I thought like, I, I think to myself, man, you couldn't even walk off the stage. You've never finished, like you've never not finished a routine, you know, and 
saluted the audience and been able to walk off on your own. So that, that in and of itself, like lit the fire, like you, you have unfinished business. You need to get back on stage. You put so much work in for this routine, like to show the world it's your time now. Like you can do this, Missy. Um, so I, there's, there's that, you know, there's obviously, you know, making, uh, myself proud. There's, there's just, there's so, there's so many people too, who have like been so supportive, like on social media and through this like entire process that like, I also want to get back on stage to like prove to them that like, I can do this and like, thank you for helping me. Um, I just, but ultimately I really want to do this for myself. Like I have no chip on my shoulder. I'm, I, I'm just ready to do what I've put in the work in this far to get back on stage. And this one's for me. Like I, 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 a lot of preps, I dedicate them for people, you know, um, right. my first Olympia win, it was like, I won it with John Meadows. So mm -hmm. I just, I feel like, man, I, I'm ready. Like this, this one is for me. Like I'm doing this fitness Olympia for me. You know, oftentimes a fitness competitor is is going to keep it close to the vest and you you're feel 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 free to do that as well what can you tell us about this upcoming routine given that yes you have a history of having a theme uh, but a very certain theme very a uh, forthright theme uh do you have anything perhaps different planned this time around what can you tell the audience as far as what they can expect to see friday night at the olympia so we're keeping the same theme. It's the Gladiator 300. Um, I put a lot of work into that uh, costume, um, just the whole persona on stage. Uh, m myself as a fitness competitor, when I have themes, I kind of embed that character into myself. Like so, a method actor. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> for the last two years, it's been like this Spartan, like go to war type person. Um, but I, I really feel like, like I'm just so excited to just perform this routine because I do have some different skills in there. Um, tumbling, uh, I just, I can't wait to show you guys cause I've worked so freaking hard and just got over all these like mental hurdles. Of course they're still there, but you know, I'm working through them and I, I know what it's like to be on the Olympia stage and those feelings. And I just, I can't freaking wait to get to get back out there and, and do it again. And I really think if you're a wrestling fan, like WWE, you're going to love my music. <laughs> nice. Nice. Are we, are we, are we going John Cena? Are we going Undertaker? Or it's uh, we are going Roman Reigns. <laughs> nice. Let's go. Yeah. You know, so much of the conversation so far has been about, again, your fitness routine and, and your ability, given what you've been through, to perform your fitness routine physique wise, where do you think you're at? Are you, are you happy given everything, given everything you had to overcome? Are you happy with your look one week out? Yeah, I am like, I am over the moon with how I look right now. I've been super quiet on um, social media just because like, I'm okay. Like I, I do well under pressure, but like I said, this prep is for me. So I, I don't care to like show my physique off and, and, you know, do those check-in photos that like I would usually post on, on my Instagram. I want the girls to guess. I want them to think, Oh, what is she going to look like? I'm coming. <laughs> I, I look good. So I'm ready. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the landscape of, again, your, your competition last year, I guess the Big revelation was fellow Canadian Taylor Learmont, first Olympia coming in second. Um, uh, Jody Boehm, I, I think she did very well in the physique round. I think she tumbled out of the top six in the night routine. Um, obviously, there is someone like uh, Whitney Jones, right? And th that this is one of the subplots that came out of that whole 
uh, fitness routine, fitness Olympia last year. Mm. Uh, and, and look, when I brought you on, it was the kind of thing where I, I wanted to make this interview about you, 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 you. But again, understanding that that was a major storyline coming out of the Olympia and there was so much that happened on social media. What did you make of all that? Her coming out with the shark head and look, I like on one hand that you do have some sort of a WWE e sort of a rivalry there. I do enjoy that. This is not just, you know, save the world, make it a better place that you do have some fire in this division. Um, now, again, th there are going to be agreements and disagreements as far as how that fire is displayed. What did you a make of again, the shark head display and then everything, the fallout on social media? Yeah. So I, I, I stand by it. I thought the shark head was like super tacky. Um, I literally did not know that like Whitney and I had this like public rivalry, um, which is kind of still to this day kind of like makes me laugh because um, she's, you know, claims to be like the the matriarch of the fitness division. So I just I felt like man, why are you coming after me? Like, I thought we were friends. <laughs> so, um, But the biggest thing for me about that whole situation was when I was backstage, I didn't see her routine. So I didn't know like what had happened. Um, so I'm, I'm sitting, I get carried off stage. I'm sitting in this chair and my husband comes over to me and he said, did you see like what Whitney's routine was? And I'm like, no. And he's like, she had like a shark mask and like threw it on the ground and then booted it off stage. And I'm like, okay, well, she better not come over to me. <laughs> so <laughs> of course, of course she comes over her probably not knowing that like I knew about the routine, um, was trying to give her sympathies and I just wasn't having it. Um, I basically said like, like your routine was about me. She's like, no, it wasn't. And I'm like, nah, it was about me. You literally had like a shark head, which is my like, right. um, like business logo. This is my brand. Um, and she kept saying, no, 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 no. So for like, I don't know, five minutes, I'm just sitting there. Cause I can't get up. I can't leave from this woman. My husband right. walked away cause he was over it. Um, so I'm sitting here and I just, I couldn't get away from her. Um, but I basically said, like, we agree to disagree. Like, we don't have to be friends. That's cool. And then she had said, like, okay, fine. The routine was about you. So it's like, like, why lie about it? And then, you know, and then go on social media, post the routine and say, like, it wasn't about me. Well, I don't know. So I just... I think it's tacky. I, uh, I'm just kind of like over it. <laughs> so, I, but again, so right now, where do you all stand? Because again, I truly was not aware that there was a quote unquote rivalry amongst you guys. Once that came out, it was like, oh wow, they must have some serious beef. So you're telling me that again, you going into that were unaware of any sort of ill will, ill feelings, or what have you. And then obviously you had that backstage conversation. What about now? Uh, is is there peace, is there harmony in the fitness world, or uh, how, how? Where do we stand now? I I just I don't I don't talk to Whitney. I, <laughs> she's not like the yeah. That's it is what it is. <laughs> um, you know there are some like really amazing girls in the, in the yeah. fitness division that I am super close with, and you know I have uh, long lasting relationships with, and. I, it's crazy because this woman, you know, I, I've competed with Whitney since like 2000, 2015, I think was our first show together, Tampa pro. She placed first, I placed second, like, I don't know. Like, I just, I always thought she would be someone who was like friends with, but I guess not. So that's okay. Like, you know, you can't be friends with everyone. You can't make everyone happy. Um, for years, I was chomping at her heels and then eventually passed her. And I just never thought that like of her as a rival, um, you know, Ariel Qatar and I are similar in age, similar physiques, uh, great person, works really yeah. hard. She is the she is the rival, not Whitney. 
Um, I don't know why Whitney put herself in that category. She's not. Um, and, it, and it's not a rival in a negative way with Ariel. It's like we're literally like, like just, you know, battling it out on stage. I have nothing against Ariel. Let's look at the uh, lineup that you're going to be going up against because you mentioned Ariel. Ariel, of course, uh, unfortunately, will not be competing. Uh, mm -hmm. Oksana Grishina is also qualified. She, too, obviously will not be competing. Um, yeah. So there you have it. There is your field right there. Uh, as mentioned, uh, Taylor Learmont comes in off, you know, second place at her debut Olympia. What did you what did you think of her? Uh, obviously, there was some controversy in terms of mixed opinions about her. Um, what did you make of her finishing second in her debut Olympia appearance? I, I honestly, like Taylor and I are pretty close. We, we chat a lot online and, um, I, I knew, like, I knew she was coming. Um, I, for last year's Olympia, I thought it was going to be me one, her two. So I, I had no, I had no doubt that she was going to make right. like a, a, a wave in the fitness division. Um, I, I, I'm excited to, uh, stand next to her on stage and, uh, you know, do the routine round and, uh, we'll see which, uh, Canadian comes out on top. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, again, when we talk about this division and really how it's evolved, I mean, you talked about the different, you know, types of physiques you have on stage, but now, I mean, again, you have such a litany of, you know, routines, right? And obviously there is there is the type of routine that you bring in. It's very themed. It's very deep, um, you know, and obviously when you're up there, we're talking about the wow factor in terms of someone with, you know, your um, physique. And I mean, uh, like from the, from the perspective of, you know, muscle maturity, I mean, we're talking about a very mature physique mm -hmm. doing these kind of fitness routines, which is such an impressive feat in and of itself. Um, but again, you know, Take an example, and I'm not just keying in on Taylor, but as an example, you're starting to get a lot of these newer competitors in the fitness industry. And it's great because, again, uh, you're seeing the talent, right? Taylor comes in, um, you know, she had, a, you know, that performance at the Legions where, again, she wowed so many people and put really the whole field on notice. She's invited to the press conference, you know, does a handstand there. But again, it electrifying electrifying routine out of her on friday night and i guess that catapulted her up to second place but do you see this division uh shifting a little bit i mean obviously we know scoring in terms of the the, the weight of the routine but I'm, I'm talking about more so from the eyeball perspective uh a little bit more weighted now towards the routine than physiques and do you like that so i i i've I've always thought that the fitness division should be 50, 50, you know, it is a bodybuilding show. People want to see bodybuilders, amazing physiques. Um, like I said, I've been competing as a pro for like 15 years. Um, and I feel like I've always taken the judges feedback, right? Whether it's denser back, harder, bigger quads, tighter midsection. I've always come to stage with the judges feedback and improved it. I feel like now the fitness routines are changing a little and they're going more towards a gymnastics routine, which is okay. If that's the, if that's the route we're taking, then we all have to um, like evolve and start going that route. Um, so of course, like we have to uh, like listen to the judges on their feedback and um, yeah. Can I ask you, because, you know, and it's, again, this is such a unique perspective that you're providing because, and I blame myself, I blame the media, I blame our entire industry. So much of the bodybuilding media coverage is centered around 8 to 12 open class slash classic physique guys. Let's just be very real about that. So we don't get to hear these perspectives, unfortunately. But now that we have you on, you know, we always hear about a competitor getting feedback from the judges, right? And generally we're talking 99.999% of the time, it's about their physique. Mm -hmm. What kind of feedback, if you can illustrate, do you get from the judges as far as your routine? Like, I mean, there could be something where it's just, you know, broad as day, like something that we all saw, but are there some fine points that a judge will tell you about your routine that again, we're not privy to? Yeah. So sometimes judges will say like, oh, we like it better when you come out 
like a wow, like a big tumbling pass, or they'll say like, you need to make sure that your plyo pushups aren't um, like you're really extending your arms out and like looking up and you're not just like fast on the ground. Um, because when you're, you know, doing there, there are a lot of things in the fitness division where you can like cheat. Um, so like those fast pushups where you see girls just go, it's not that it's difficult. Um, whereas opposed to actually push up being down and then exploding up. So the judges will catch on to things like that and, and critique it. Um, and another big thing too, is like crowd engagement. So mm. if you're not engaging with the audience, if you can't like draw them in and you're just kind of like doing a gymnastics routine up there, you know, doing all the salt, right, 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 right. they, they don't really, um, they, they, they don't feel that emotion to like a routine. Um, so yeah, I do, I do think the judges, um, they're, I, I think they're getting very good with giving us feedback on routines and, and physique. So yeah, it's always good to ask them for that stuff. That, that's, that's cool. I mean, again, I just learned something and I'm hoping that our audience learned something as well, because again, whenever we've spoken to an athlete, you know, prior to competing at a show or after, you know, they'll tell us, well, you know, obviously like Tyler told me this, told me to bring this up, told me to come in tight or what have you. Right. But yeah. this is the first time that we're hearing actual, um, you know, what judges will tell you in terms of it, fitness routine. So that's very cool. And I'm glad that we got that perspective. Um, when do you go out to Vegas? Right. Because the reason I ask is because, you know, we're sitting here, it's, uh, Wednesday. Uh, wh when do you arrive uh, in Vegas? So uh, we're flying out on Monday. Okay. Um, it's about a two hour flight and then I'll go to an Airbnb, get situated. And, um, yeah, then it's like go time. I think we it, Olympia stuff starts happening on like the Wednesday. Right. Let me ask you, uh, you know, I think about, uh, the Rocky movies, right. Where there was Rocky one where he, he's about to fight Apollo Creed and the day before the night before the actual fight, he goes to the arena. You see him standing there and the promoter walks up to him or whatever. And, you know, Rocky's kind of like reminiscing, kind of envisioning, reflecting or whatever. And the promoter just kind of like, doesn't care. He's like, yeah, whatever kid, you're going to put on a good show, whatever it is, what it is. Do you plan on going to the stage, the venue at a certain quiet time before everything begins and either a soaking in the moment, kind of visualizing yourself back up there after everything you've had to you know, overcome over the last year. Uh, and then beyond that, um, I, don't, I don't know how this works. Do you get a chance to do practice your routines on stage before the madness begins? Yeah, usually um, we get on stage. Our prejudge is usually like 930. And then we can get on stage around like 5 p.m to practice and then we're backstage ready to go at seven o'clock like no one leaves so we have like one like basically one round of like a warm-up on on stage which is nice um because you know you get to see kind of like how yes. the audience is going to be and just get your like bearings and peripherals and all that type of stuff so um as for that whole taking it all in and soaking it all in. Um, I really feel like this prep specifically, I've really tried to do that because I've just worked so hard. Like it's not, it's not even about, I don't know. Like I, I it's hard for me to explain just because I've worked so hard to get here. I don't have that chip on my shoulder where I'm like, oh, I want to beat this person. I want to beat this person. It's like, no, I just want to like do the best that I can do for myself because I know how good I am. Like I know that I have won, won two Olympias before, like won two Arnold titles. Like no one can take that away from me, but now I have to show up for myself. So well, look, Missy, this is, again, like I've prefaced, it's truly one of the inspirational stories riding into the Olympia. Um, this is one of the monumental storylines for the fitness division. And look, your division kicks off the Olympia, so it's always special. Uh, 
seeing you guys, you know, take the stage and groups, whatever, because that's when you know the Olympia has begun. Prejudging mm-hmm. this at the night show, we get to see you show out in your routine. So you girls always set the pace, set the tenor for the weekend. So it's always a special thing when we see you on stage, but it's going to be even more special seeing you on stage, given what you've been through, uh, given what you've endured, what you've had to overcome, and every chapter in the book that it took to get you back on that Olympia stage. And uh, hats off to you. This is a great story. And um, I'm hoping that whoever gets to watch this is going to draw inspiration from your story. And it's going to be great to see you back on that stage on Friday. Thank you, Sid. I really appreciate that. And um, I, I'm excited to see you next weekend. And thank you, RX, for having me on. Uh, let's go fitness.